with somebody and and literally this is actually funny so i wind up sleeping with him and he's like yeah i'm actually like i'm not gonna brag he's like um i'm famous like i'm I'm on tiktok and he brings up your tiktok and it was like one of the daddies no yes yes, (laughs) and i was literally like brand flakes and then kev was like we're getting brand flakes on the show and i was like Yes. yes, check this off Good my bucket list. I was like, He's way to come full circle. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now entered girl talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what someone's going through in their day to day. It's amazing. You just come full circle. And like, sleep on the, on the pavement. Yeah, the best part was the crowd. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the loft. Uh, our next guest is a TikTok star who knows exactly how to finesse bottle service. <laughs> Can identify a guy just by the Philly neighborhood he lives in and just past the 200K milestone on TikTok, ladies and gentlemen, Brand Flakes. Yes. <laughs> wow. On, that bro. was an intro. That was an intro. <laughs> no, I didn't get that one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, was my, uh, it was my first one. I figured, you know, try to spice it up a little bit. But, um, dude, that. thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, and thank you for that intro. Absolutely. Yeah, right? um, we're all a little hungover. Uh, a little hungover. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, so I wanted to have you on. Uh, I came across your TikTok about the Philly neighborhoods. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and then I kind of did a little bit more research and I just, uh, I think you're, you're like a good, like kind of public figure. You're kind of building, you're, you're growing a little bit and I think you're hilarious and I think you're very charismatic. So I wanted to have you on. Thank and, uh, you. yeah, just kind of, just kind of learn a bit more about you, you know, hundred percent. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, so I also wanted to dive into a little bit about mental health. I know you've been stressing, you're getting a little bit of anxiety, yeah. um, with all your growth that's happening and a lot of people coming at you. Um, and also Paige, welcome Paige. Uh, Hello. she's a, our, <laughs> or t- one of our co-hosts, yes. uh, she's coming on. Woo-hoo. She absolutely loves you. So I figured yes. have I her on. Like, Kev, I am there. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. You, don't, you can't even say no. Yeah. It'll be, yeah. I figured, <laughs> figured it'd be fun. So, but now, yeah. And I know, um, and with your sexuality, too, I know it's very important for people to be more open about it. And yeah. I know that you're an advocate for, you know, like gay pride and stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to have you on talk a little bit about that, a little bit about your story, too. Um, yeah. cause I'm not sure how, how much you talked about that um, publicly, but. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, well, I'm Brandon. Most people yes. know me as Brand Flakes. <laughs> um, I'm 25 years old. I grew up in the suburbs, uh, like outside of Philly, like 30 minutes out of here. Um I went to school in the city, um, then after school moved to Fishtown. Um, so I've been in the Philly area my whole entire life. Um, just like last year, like about a year ago from today, actually, I downloaded TikTok. Um, first few months I was just making videos, like kind of messing around with it. And then when June hit, actually it was Pride Month, I started making like a few different like Pride videos, like just like signs that should have told my parents I was gay, stuff like that. Um, and that's when I first started like to see like success. I was like, wait, I was like, people will like actually like watch videos of like me talking about stuff. Mm. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and then July Fourth weekend, I hit ten thousand followers. And I was like, holy crap! I was like, this is like actually taking yeah, off. Yeah, this is so, actually taking off. And now here we are. And I'm built kind of fast. Yeah, it built really fast, and it's like continuing to grow really fast, which is like great, but like. Also, like, oh, my God, like, when is this, like, going to slow down? (laughs) Wait, so when did you start your TikTok account? So I created the account last January, so about a year ago. Um, But I didn't, like, really start to consistently, like, try, I don't think, until, like, June. And that's when I, like, started to notice, like, oh, wow, like, I can do something with this. Do you feel pressure to post? Yes, 100%. I try to post two times a day, which is, like... It's intense. Like I probably at this point, like now that I've hit a certain following, like I could ease up on that. But like it really does help grow your account more Mm -hmm. and more when you continuously post. Um, So it just brings in all the engagement, the viewers, the viewers and like followers. So I do try to post like twice a day um, and I've only taken like a few breaks. And by breaks, I mean like one to two days max. Do you brainstorm all of your ideas or you kind of just go with what? So I do, I have like a notes, uh, like in my notes app, I have like a list of ideas. Like when I think of something like, oh, that's funny, but like I can't film it in that moment, I'll write something down. Um, But a lot of things like I'm very like, once I get the idea in my mind, I want to film it right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and then I also do like different series. Like I do hotline videos. I do like funny infomercials. Um, I have like a bunch of different (laughs) like playlists. So that ha- kind of helped me keep a structure of things. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like I can do this type of video again, but on a different subject. 
Um, so that helps me like continuously like grow and stay okay. consistent. Yeah, I feel like TikTok's been a good platform for you to kind of show your personality too. For sure. You know, they're a little Instagram and TikTok are pretty different. Um, yeah, and TikTok, it's just like the algorithm is insane. I mean, it is, you can go viral on that app. You can have no followers and you can blow up. There's mm-hmm. nothing really else out there like that right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just like going to continuously grow, I think. So yeah. I'm excited to see what happens with it for sure. Yeah, so I was kind of curious, what kind of opportunities have have come and have have come since you've started like kind of blowing up on TikTok? Yeah, so at first it was just like, okay, I just want free shit. So <laughs> yeah. when yeah. I hit like it, free shit is good. Yeah. Free shit's like, always good. Once I hit like twenty five thousand followers, I was like, great. I was like, I'll start like asking restaurants if I can just come and eat for free and like post a picture and stuff. And then it got to the point where I was like, okay, now I want to get paid for shit. Yeah, it's so like I want to do something. And I not only is it going to be free, but I'm also going to get paid to do it. Um, so I've gotten a lot of brand collaborations, brand partnerships. Um, I've been able to make like a decent amount of money off of it since starting it. So like it started as a side hustle. And last month I made double what I make at my full time job just wow. through TikTok. Oh, nice. Yeah. So there is a lot of opportunity. And then there's also just like with the platform, you know, obviously my Instagram has started to grow and then you just get the opportunity to meet people and like Mm -hmm. do cool things that like you maybe have always wanted to do but never had the chance to do it like companies all over um reach out to me and then I get people that like follow me from like as far away as Australia I'm like holy shit like Mm -hmm. this is like making that big of an impact so I love that um and for me something that I'm really passionate about too is supporting local businesses um, so anything I can do to like support a local business, whether it's just throwing like an Instagram story up there or wearing one of their products in a video, um, I love to do that because I think mm-hmm. local businesses were hit so hard through the pandemic. Yeah. And I have such a soft spot in my heart for Philly. It's literally where I was born and raised. So right. anything I could do to support like a Philly local business, I try to do. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I love, as you can see, Busy Meals sent us some uh, cheesecake egg rolls and, so you know, we're going to try them soon. But yeah, no, nah, I always believe in just helping the little guy and like, well, and I'm a little guy too. Like I'm not right. anywhere, but it's like, it's just cool because uh, they, they say yes, and it's just, it's just a way to build relationships and network, and, you know, who knows what will come from it, you know? So, 100%. Um, so you mentioned you've done some cool things. What are some of the cool th- opportunities that TikTok has presented you? Oh, my God, so much. So I think the first thing that comes to mind, so I'm obsessed, you're a DJ, with the song Losing It by Fisher. <laughs> I love your okay. TikTok like, song. Literally <laughs> the, my favorite song, like, for whatever. And a few years ago, I went to his concert. I, like... He posted a video of me. It like went crazy. So that's hilarious. I did a story time about that day, and mm-hmm. I was like, "This is the craziest day of my life." I met Fisher. Here's how it happened, and his team saw it, reposted the TikTok to his account, and then invited me to his show in DC. That's wow. sick. Wow. I that's spent cool. the entire like night with Fisher and his crew backstage, and it was like insane. That's I feel a, like that's an out of body experience. It was out of body like, yeah. for sure. Like that's I literally, cool. and then he invited me on stage when he played losing it. Like yeah. that was insane. But I feel cool, like I would have a flashback yeah. of like everything that like posting all that stuff. And then like, just like that's I, insane. Yeah. And two days prior to that, which is what the biggest thing that's ever happened to me was. So I noticed one day when I got home that Selena Gomez followed me, like saw the name, saw the blue check mark. On Instagram? Like, on TikTok. On TikTok? And I was like, out. holy shit. I saw I like, you posted, to be yeah. fake. you posted that FaceTime. I just posted yep. yes. FaceTime. So cool. I like clicked on it. I was like, holy shit. No, this is like actually Selena Gomez. I'm one of like the 25 people in the world that she follows on TikTok. So a week later, I hit 100,000 followers um, and I went live on TikTok just to like say thank you, everybody, for supporting me, whatever. And she joined the live and I was like, holy shit, Selena Gomez Selena is, Gomez in, the is chat. in here. <laughs> so I just like, I'm going to just like invite her in, not thinking she was going to join. And then is it on your join. TikTok? Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to look for it. I want to say I'll put, I'll, I'll put it in the episode. Too. It, is so it was cool. insane. She was the nicest person. I was like, holy shit, Selena Gomez is fangirling over me. You. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was. Is it recent? I feel like that. Yeah, it's but from that, October. October. That's how far I go back on your TikToks. Like <laughs> I am obsessed. But I think that it's so cool because it also shows like the human side of her too. Yeah. And I feel 100%. like we forget about that a lot. Always. She's such a nice mm-hmm. person. I also posted it to my Instagram reels, and it will pop up probably sooner. Oh, peep. Okay. And she actually, and she's been through a lot too. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. That was just so. It's like that's that's the amount of power like this app holds and like yeah. making videos. It's like people are always like, oh, it's just like all of your followers Philly based. I'm like, really? No. no. I mean, I'm sure probably 25 to 40 percent uh, of them. It's are. just so, it's super relatable. Right. Are you yeah. on it? Did you find it? I'll put it. it. I love your videos. Stop. I love you. Me and my friends watch them every night. Stop. 
<laughs> You're makes actually me so kidding. happy, but I'm having a bad day. It makes me so happy. Oh my god. I, I just want to say thank you for being amazing and unapologetically. Wait. That is yeah. so amazing. That's a bit of a flex, don't you yeah, say? Yeah, that's a little bit of a flex. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, yeah, um, so yeah. Like, actually, Selena Gomez is my best. Yeah. Wait, so when you're out, too, like, do you have a bunch of people that come up to you now? Yeah. And does that ever get frustrating? It does. Um, so that was, like, where I really started to notice, like, a shift turn. Yeah. Um, probably, like... August I, I go to the beach all the time in the summer I always go out in Sea Isle and like it was one night like it was just a madhouse like multiple people coming up to me to the point where my friends were like dude we're gonna have to leave like I try to be so nice to everybody because like obviously these are the people who have like helped me develop this platform I want to yeah. support everybody and I genuinely want to meet everybody <laughs> um sometimes though it does get hard you know like there's sometimes where I'm walking through a crowded bar and someone stops me at the most inconvenient place mm -hmm. and like holds up the whole bar to take a picture and it's like I want to say I'm sorry I can't right now but I just like I don't have the heart to do that yeah and then there's been times like obviously where I'm out and I'm drunk that like I've, I guess, been rude to people. Like, someone DM'd me, like, last week. They were like, I just saw you at Buffalo Billiards and you didn't even say hi to me. Like, what a great way to treat your followers. And I was like, mm. listen, like, I'm still a human being. Sometimes I'm having a bad day, too. And, like, I'm not always in, like, the best mood mm -hmm. when I'm out. Like, I could be having people a bad People don't get night. that. Yeah, people don't get it. And it's like, it's nothing personal. But I would hope that most of people, like, anytime I see somebody, I try to be so nice, say hi. And if we're in, like, an intimate setting, like, I was at dinner last night, like, in a booth and someone pulled me over. I was like, oh, I have the chance to talk to you. I want to at least shake your hand, know your name mm -hmm. and say nice to meet you mm -hmm. um because i think that that really like is powerful to people to know like oh he's a person he like cares about who you are and wants because i do i really do want to know mm -hmm. like i try to reply to everyone's comments on my videos like i want to be that person that like you feel like you can talk to i'll be honest with you when you're starting out <clears throat> you kind of have to be yeah, yeah. you know because it's like and it's a good strategy it i was gonna say it can increase your i don't want to say that too. like i don't want people to be like oh that's so you're, it's not genuine because it is genuine but it also is a smart business strategy if you are not c commenting or interacting with any of the people that follow you what is the incentive for them to keep mm -hmm. interacting with your videos they don't they're not going to have one yeah um <laughs> so it just helps build that like brand loyalty it kind of goes with the saying too like never meet your idol or something like you know what i'm saying not, yeah. like, you're still you're still growing and you know relatively like you know <clears throat> you're still growing and feeling and all that but like yeah. it's all you, you always want to be the same person that you are in your tiktoks you know what yeah. I'm saying? and it's to be that same and it's hard obviously all the time but reality is dude like you're going to be able to have this as a career and you're not going to have to like really work. You're going to be able to just be yourself forever. <laughs> also, I what, hope so. What do you do on the side? Like you're, I work in, um, merchandising, like okay. do like business, um, basically business. Yeah. Yeah. Is your end goal <clears throat> to get out of that? Um, or do you think you'll stick yeah, with that? Yeah. So like <laughs> sort of, yeah. I feel like eventually I would want to do this stuff full time if I could. It's just hard because like, you never know what's going to happen with Absolutely. TikTok. The apps Social media threatened. can be gone yeah. tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, you could, like, people can get sick of you quickly. And also it's like, sure, it pays, but it doesn't give you benefits. So it's nice to have, like, a consistent mm -hmm. paycheck that gives you benefits and everything. So when the time comes, it will come. But for now, kind of just riding out the mm -hmm. wave that I'm on right now. So what is your agenda and plan right now? Like, what are your goals right now? <clears throat> My goals right now is just to, I think, like, Starting the new year, I've been trying to do a few new things, which is one being really transparent on the app, which is great. I made a video last week, like I was mentioning, saying how much money I made, and I wasn't doing that to flex. I genuinely feel like we are in this culture where everyone's so shy about what they make, and I get it. It's a private yeah. thing, but yeah, also pretty, when, yeah. you, when you think really deeply about it, it's not benefiting us as a society. It's only benefiting the corporations yeah. that are able to not pay us what we're worth because no one knows what they're worth, and essentially. So it's like if we were all more open about that, it would be like, wait, no, like I'm worth making this much money. But I also wanted to do it, which I accomplished because I got some really great comments. I wanted to inspire people that like if this is something you want to do, if you want to pursue mm -hmm. a career in content, like – do it. There is money in it. There is a lucrative business that you can pursue. And I want, I know that some people get stuck and want to give up and I'm like, don't give up. Like you can push that boundary. Like there was months where I didn't make any money. There was months where I was probably spending money and spending all my time making videos. But once you hit that point, there's not really, you'll start to build and build and build. Yeah. So when did you, how long did it take for you to get your first 10,000? 
ten thousand dollars. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh, followers. followers. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, like six months. I started in January okay. and hit ten thousand in July. Yeah. So you're a very unique case because obviously there's not many people in the world like Brand Flakes. So, um, <laughs> when you were starting out, like what 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 was kind of going through your head? Like what was your process? Was it you just doing it just for fun? Or did you have a set goal? Like, listen, this is what I want to do. I want to have the set amount. Like, or did you kind of were just like, all right, screw it. You kind of just yeah. messing around. So I knew when I downloaded the app that. I wanted to make videos because a lot of people just have TikTok and they just use it to watch videos. They would never make a TikTok in their life, yeah. which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was like, no, I was like, I'm going to make videos. Um, and I didn't really know how the app worked. It's very hard to use. It's like, really confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can and be. It can be. When I first downloaded it, I remembered I was like asking all my friends, I was like, what's your TikTok username? Like, I want to follow you. And my friends were like, this isn't Instagram. Like, you don't just like follow your friends on TikTok. It's like, you kind of just download the app and like follow funny people. And I was like, oh, I was like, whatever. All right. But I was glad that I did because I made all my friends follow me back. And I was like, great. Now I have 75 followers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would be annoying. And like, literally I would post a video and I would text my friends and be like, hey, can you go like this? Like, I want to see if it will go viral. Mm. Um, and I was like, damn, I'm never going to get a video that goes viral. Like just mm. month after month, I would get videos that just got like 300 views, 300 views, 300 views. I was yeah. Like, yeah. Then one day I used like a random trending sound, um, with a relatable caption and boom, I got like 2.6 million views. I was like, holy shit. Oh, wow. Mm. I was like, this is so freaking cool. Like yeah. whatever. <laughs> I was like, I love this. I was like, yeah. I'm famous. <laughs> yeah. And you know, but then the next video get 300 views. Right. And I was like, okay, so it's not consistent. Like if you want to develop a platform, you kind of have to think of like, a strategy and I think yeah. what my strategy was I was like I'm gonna have to talk I was like I'm gonna mm -hmm. have to go beyond just using these trending sounds and making a relatable caption like everyone can do that mm -hmm. I was like but not everyone can be me I was right. like so I'm gonna start talking I was like I'm gonna tell funny stories like I know I'm a funny person um I'm gonna try to make people laugh yeah and that's what started happening and then once I saw what people started to like and relate to I was like okay that's what I'm gonna continue to go with right. so you have to pick a niche with TikTok like once you have like a very specific genre of videos your followers are going to continue to want that mm -hmm. and for me that is what I call gay chaos, which is anything mm. that encompasses it's in your gay chaos. I love it's, that. Yeah, no, it's going yeah. out. It's being toxic with boys. It's yeah. finessing things, paying for as little things as you can. Yeah. Being in this friend group that like acts like they live in freaking LA, but we literally live in like one of the dirtiest cities <laughs> in America. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's just being crazy. Not Were yet. you always like that? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> I really like found that side of me. I was always like, I always loved reality TV growing up. I was always funny, but like I was very reserved like in high school, middle school because I was bullied. Like mm -hmm. I was like the chubby gay kid. Like most people did not want to be my friend. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I went to college, I was like, I don't want to live like this anymore. I was like, I'm going to at this point, like all my close friends had known that I was gay. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to college. and I'm gay. Like, that's mm -hmm. it. I'm mm -hmm. saying who the first person I see. I like dick. Just saying. it. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And I remember I went to. I'll never forget this. So I pulled up to my dorm. It was day one. I see this really beautiful girl outside. And I was like, oh, my God, she's so pretty. I would, like, love to be her friend, like, whatever. So I'm like, oh, my God, can I see your room? Everyone's setting up the room. So exciting. And I walk in. She had a rainbow flag. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, are you, like, a gay ally? She's like, no, I am gay. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I, I totally that. stereotyped her. It's this beautiful, tall, blonde girl. And she's like, right. no, I'm gay. And I was like, wait. I was like, I'm gay, too. And it was so easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, I'm going to fashion school. I can be gay here. Like, yeah. I was like, I can just be myself. Yeah. So that's what happened. And then I like noticed that people liked me. I was like, wow. I was like, if I literally just act like myself, people will actually want to be around me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I started like to really mm -hmm. develop into brand flakes. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, after that, I just became this outgoing, yeah. like funny, charismatic guy. It's Do you think yeah. TikTok made you find yourself a little bit more too? I would say so. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely like helped me find more confidence and it helped me um, it helped me like realize that like I have something special mm -hmm. um, yeah. that like and people appreciate it. Yeah, it definitely helped me realize that like I'm not just any person like I have like I have a talent um, mm -hmm. because I was always like, what am I good at? I was like, but. I'm good at TikTok and it's not just being good at like being yourself. It's like being good at marketing, you know, thinking of a strategy, mm -hmm. creating a brand. Um, and like you said, concepts. supporting like the local businesses and stuff like that too. 100%. Like it all comes full circle. Yeah. yeah. It like definitely reinforced me. I was like, Oh, I am creative. Like mm -hmm. I, I do have like a good vision. I do have good ideas. And that was, that was really helpful. Yeah. yeah. It definitely amplified who you were. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I think that's really important too, is if like, it's funny, isn't it? Like, 
you, like I feel like growing up, you feel like you really couldn't be yourself, and yeah. then you kind of uh, take that leap, and now you you kind of like are in the best position of yeah. your life. It's like just by being open and being who you are. Mm-hmm. You know? And it took, I mean, it took a long, long time. And yeah. I mean, there's still days where I like feel like I felt like when I was in middle school, you know, anxiety comes back in waves and, you know, insecurities are never gone for permanent. Like they always come back. Mm -hmm. Um, But no, I I definitely think that I found myself within the past like four to five years and I'm hoping I continue to do that. So when did, um, when, so when did you realize you were gay? Um, I realized I was gay. I will in seventh grade. Literally, okay. I started looking at my English teacher's dick in his pants. I was like, I watch it. I literally, you're like, I think I like that. I was like, oh <laughs> fuck. I was like, that's kind of that's, that's hilarious. hilarious. And then like fully, like totally, like new, 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 like freshman mm-hmm. year of high school. That's like when mm-hmm. I first like. When did you? Somebody. When did you come out? Um, so I came out slowly to a few friends, like people that I was comfortable with. Um, and then like, so by the time I was like a junior in high school, like all my good friends knew. Um, and then I told my mom on my 17th birthday, I remember that. Mm. And then after that, I was like, you can tell dad. I was like, you can tell the family. I was like, I don't really feel like telling anybody mm-hmm. else. I was like, I don't really care. Like, I yeah. kind of don't want to talk about it. I was like, I just want you to know. If you know, you and know. And then yeah. got to college. And like I said, there was, it was not a secret. It was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, they, were your friends like, yeah, no shit when he told them or like, they're like, no. surprised. I, so I was in such harsh denial mm. and like, I've actually talked to somebody recently who like said they experienced this too or it's like I was denying it so so hard that like my friends were defending me they're like no he's not no he's not because it was the point where I would get so upset when people would say it that they my friends were just good friends it's like yeah it's like their opinion of it didn't matter they were like no he's not gay he says he's not gay so when I told them they were like okay like yeah we're glad but what'd your parents say Oh, they didn't care. My mom was just like, really? She was just like, okay, Just cool. super supportive. That's yeah. awesome. It was That's so awesome. chill. I didn't want like any like crying or mushy gushy or like over the top. Because at that point I was still very new to it and like uncomfortable mm-hmm. with it. So I literally just said, I was like, I don't really want to talk about it anymore. I was like, if I want to talk about it, I will just like, just, I just want you to know. And mm-hmm. she was like, okay, cool. We'll leave it at that. And that's, that's it. If you could, if you could give somebody a piece, like piece of advice with coming out, that's struggling with that, especially at this age, what would you say? I would say that find the right person at the right moment. You, the first person I told that I was gay was an acquaintance. It was someone that was in my oh, high school. Wow. She was a person in my high school that was bisexual, and I was we had been friendly for years. And I was just like, "Hey, like, I'm gay," and it just felt comfortable to tell somebody. Mm-hmm. And then I started telling like friends that I like I didn't tell my best best friend until like probably the sixth or seventh person I told. So don't like feel like you have to jump at once. Be like, I have to tell everybody right now. Mm -hmm. Take whatever you're comfortable with. For me, it was slowly telling more and more people and starting with someone that I wasn't super, super close with because I didn't have to like make it a big deal or worry about our relationship changing because we didn't have much of a relationship to begin with. Um, So whatever, just find what works for you. Don't overwhelm yourself. If you're not ready now, you don't have to be. Um, You'll find that moment where it will come. But I will say if it's something that's like ruining your life, like it's a secret that's literally giving you anxiety and causing you mental distress, like you have to do, you have to talk to somebody about it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's all about finding your rhythm and taking it step by step. Yeah. What was that first month, two months like when you did come out? Like a fully like, was there a burden that was off your back or? Definitely. Um, I feel like it was just like freeing just to be able to be like, that guy's hot. Or like, do you think this? I think that was the most exciting (laughs) part at first. I was like, like, so this is who I think is attractive. Do you think they're attractive? Actually, I love my You get to chill with your girlfriends now. (laughs) Yeah. So I was like, this is like, finally I can talk about this whole like area that I was at one point like, so and I feel like you can start about. stepping into like exactly who you are and, and what you want to make of that and stuff too. Yeah. But um, I also wanted to circle back and just like you said that some of the videos you make, like sometimes you'll like have anxiety with the comments and yeah. you go, do you go through all the comments? I wouldn't, I can't read every single comment on every video. I try to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, there's definitely comments that give me like a lot of anxiety. Um, and you know, it's, it's you don't when you, it's not normal by any means to have two hundred thousand people watching the your every that move you that you yeah. put up. Yeah. So it's like it seems and it is a great thing. It's like holy shit, I have two hundred thousand followers. But it's like holy shit, I have two hundred thousand followers. Literally watching me. So it's like for any normal person who like once like a year ago today I had 
no followers. Like it's a huge like jump and mm-hmm. there's not really like, you know, say you become famous through singing or acting, you know, you get a team, you get like an agent, you get somebody. Yeah. Um, you're like, you're I make- have my girlfriend. Yeah, and you're making a lot of money. <laughs> so like you can afford to talk to people. It's like in content creation, like sure. I could, I've had people ask me, my managers and stuff, whatever, but it's like, I'm not ready for that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you're in it alone when you first start and you can't like, people can listen and understand, but it's hard to find people that relate to you because not everyone has that kind of a following. Not everyone's dealing with that. So I found comfort in talking to other creators. You know, I posted a video yesterday of talking about like the downsides of it, the negative impacts it can have on your mental health. And majority of the comments were from other creators on TikTok, And they were like, I'm so glad you talked about this because it is like yeah. a very weird situation that not everybody can understand and relate to. So sometimes, you know, it's weird. It's like you have 200,000 people, but it's sometimes you don't feel like you couldn't feel more alone. Did, yeah. did you have people coming back in your life when you kind of started like getting a little bit Absolutely. of... Absolutely. Like you will see, <clears throat> and I said this, your personal relationships for me, I think is what has changed the most. You'll see people come back and there'll be people that are so genuine. People that you haven't talked to in years just being like, they'll just send you a nice message. Just want to know you're killing it. So proud of you. No, we haven't talked in a while, but I just watch you. Genuine. Yeah. Then you have people that like you can tell, like, oh, do you want to hang out? They want clout. I want to. Yeah. I want to. I want to be on your TikTok. Yeah, I want to do that stuff. Yeah. Um. And for me, the biggest struggle I've had, like, I was never good at dating before, but like my dating life couldn't be more of like a hot mess since it's happened. <laughs> yeah. Like, Super toxic. Because <laughs> you think automatically, you're like, oh, well, like everyone's gonna want to like date you and get in your pants now, and it's like. Sure, a little bit here and there, but actually I've noticed the reverse effect where it's Mm -hmm. like not everyone wants to date someone with that big of a following. Not everyone wants to date somebody that is like constantly in your face on social media. Like I post, I would hate to be my ex. I post two videos a day. Like (laughs) you're going to see me at some point. Um, And it's like the whole, it's like a Taylor Swift situation. Are you going to write a song about me? Everyone's like, are you going to make a TikTok about me if I fuck you over? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to make a TikTok about you. (laughs) Don't fuck me over. I mean, yeah. And I feel like a lot of people just like, it doesn't really matter to them, you know? And that's kind of, there's something kind of a beauty in that. And that's probably something you'd probably want to head more towards if like, like dating, like in your personal life, just because like. A lot of people post about that too. Like there's so many girls too that I see like, and I'll creep on them too because I'll be like. There's she's always posting alone or something like that. Mm. And then you'll find a video and they're explaining why they're doing that because they're like, yeah. it's too much. Like people can't handle it. Yeah. Right. And then pe- I think people forget the reality of that. And like I said, like in the beginning, like people forget, like I'm still a human being like yep. Selena Gomez. She's still just because she's famous doesn't mm-hmm. mean that she's not like one of yeah. us. And that's yeah. the hardest part. It's like obviously on TikTok, I'm being myself, but of course I'm only showing parts of myself. Like in a way you're still playing a character. Like Mm -hmm. I'm still playing brand flakes and there are people that don't understand that I'm also still branding Mm -hmm. and they can't separate that. So like there's people who like, I'll talk to a guy that I'm like maybe interested in. He's like, I can never keep up with you. Like, or your lifestyle is too crazy for me. And it's like, you're only basing that off of what you see on the internet, which Mm -hmm. I get is what I'm showing, but I'm a whole other person outside of that. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. Your personal relationships change like severely. Yeah. Have you ever thought about uh, starting a YouTube channel? I feel like it would be so great. Yeah. No, I have. It's just like, I get, (laughs) so as I mentioned, a lot of this is overwhelming. So I try to take things one step at a time. And right now, like my hardest thing is to time management. If I was doing this full time, this was my full time career. Absolutely. I would have a YouTube channel. I would have a podcast. Mm-hmm. I would be trying to do this to the max. Um, but right now I, it's just, I don't have the time to do it. If I had a team where someone could film me and edit the videos for me, absolutely. I don't mind. I'll be on camera all day. I was like, Kev, <laughs> excuse me. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me and Dylan, um, yeah. yeah. You guys are like, I am, I sign me up. But I want to be, I need to have the funds too to pay you guys. So that's like, it's hard to figure out. But um, I totally will. people like to do that stuff for fun. Like, Ken, yeah. Yeah. you do some of that stuff for fun too. Dude, like, I just I mean, like, we volunteer. That's I just like weird. to help people, dude. Like, I talk well, to, let's do it. I podcast, I talk to even <laughs> yeah. Paige. I know she wants to start a little bit of a vlog series for restaurants and kind of dive yeah, into like mental we, health. It all comes full circle too. Yeah. Like, that. Me and you had the same vision in regards to like helping helping small businesses and yeah. and being able to like my my goal too is like and what I want to start is yeah. basically mini vlogs with helping small businesses and 
doing that for free though because yeah. it's like yeah. it's something it's like a side thing like you do tiktok on the side mm-hmm. and everything like yeah and that comes full circle but what i like about that is you learn so, so much, much about mm-hmm. the individual yeah. and their story and then you take stuff from that yeah. yeah and apply it to your own goals and your own vision and your own values yeah. i love that yeah no so dylan um videographer dylan uh how are yes. you brother um no, yeah so he I remember I put out an Instagram story about like needing help filming and stuff because uh, I'm I do like videos on the side too and I do stuff for my nonprofit and all and um, he reached out and he's come to me uh, come with me to Pottstown he's done so many videos for me mm-hmm. and um, and I pay him here and there but he he's like in it and he's like he's like listen Kev he's like I'm not I don't expect anything but like I know that when it does take off he'll be the first person that I give yeah. credit to yeah, first person I help so too. it's like you want people that. <clears throat> Actually, see your vision yeah, yeah. exactly that's like very true people who who like you who mess with you and like want to see you grow and want to be a part of it you know that, that's like that's like my advice to you if you're building like a team quote unquote like mm-hmm. you want people around you who understand what you're doing and want to help you and see you succeed because then because if you have somebody that you're just paying just to, to do it like there's no real passion in that yeah. there's no dedication 100%. in that whereas like i know dylan would come uh, where where we go? Did you? Yeah, you met Did up with me in Pottstown. This dude, how far was that drive? Hour. Dude drove an hour just to film a video with me. Like yeah. it's crazy. Like dedication. Exactly. So like now, like I like I am loyal to him now. You know, he was loyal to me, so now I'm loyal to him. Right. No matter what. Everything in life comes back. And it's like, like full circle. You the important part out. is is like you're starting out small, at like relatively small, and you're starting out. And it's like you got to find those people who are going to be at, by your side when you're starting out. Like yeah. I know I can count on Paige. I can count on Dylan for anything. Like she volunteers at my nonprofit now every single week. And I don't even have to hit her up. She's just there and I can count on her. I you know what I'm that. saying? And it's like you have those people that in your life where you can find people who are going to dedicate themselves to you. And that's how you learn. Like, hey, listen, you can, like everything about like example, editing, videoing, co-hosting podcasting that shit you can learn yeah. you can't learn dedication you can't learn loyalty yeah. you can't learn because yeah. that's something i struggled with um just even starting a podcast you know i've had people just like come in and out in and out of my life I, like i've lost friends i've lost people not necessarily because of the podcast because of other stuff in my life but i kind of learned like the people that are loyal to you are the ones that matter and yeah. your, your circle is going to get smaller you want yeah. you want to keep it small yeah. you don't want to be fr- i learned i used to, dude i used to want to be friends with everyone like I, I used to be that person and i'm like oh sure. they don't like me why do they not like me yeah now i'm kind of like you Huge know what people pleaser hey you don't fuck with me ah, that's fine yeah. that's cool you know it's like it has no it has no nothing to do with me it's a direct reflection of you exactly. like i'm gonna yeah. keep it pushing yeah but yeah it's all about <laughs> just finding those people that are loyal to you and care about you and want to see you succeed because those are the ones that are going to be there for you yeah. you know when it's all said and done you know what i mean so and and yeah and dude and honestly dude like i i i'm like a i brainstorm about everything like i think like Paige, yeah. she <laughs> she came to me about her ideas and i'm like anything that you need help with, with in terms of videos or content like i would love to i would love to just help and be a part of it and just yeah, help you out and that. you know what i mean because i do all my own video editing photoshop and all that stuff so it's like it'd be cool because I've been looking for people in Philly who do this, want to do the same shit that I want to do. Yeah, yeah. I do not know. I cannot work a, a camera. Like, I, I'm, like, I'm like, Kev, I can, I can be funny. I can do anything. I was like, I want to do a vlog. I want to do a podcast. And I was like, I need you. Well, and he was like, he was the, so helpful. At the same time, it's like, you just, you just got to do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, like we were talking about the TikTok app. Like, how long did it probably take you to like kind of get certain things down? Like, you didn't know how to do captions when you first download yeah. the app. But it took then you, me a while. Then you do it and then you learn, you kind of learn, you know, camera presence. You learn, you know, yeah. you kind of figure yourself out just by doing it and it takes mm-hmm. time and, and repetition. You know what I mean? So. 100%. But, um. I want to, I do want to go back to like the anxiety part of it though. Like if you had to give somebody advice on like overlooking the comments and like ha- being able to have those bad days and and like still stick to your brand and everything like what would you give somebody else starting off with TikTok It's hard because I still need to get better with this mm-hmm. Um definitely for me what I do when I like see something that like really upsets me is I talk to another creator um I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Cass in the City but um Mm -hmm. she was she's a big TikToker she's like the Philly TikToker she does Mm -hmm. restaurant reviews you know she does goes to cool places 
And when I first started developing on the app, she actually reached out to me immediately and she kind of became like my mentor, like really helped me I grow. That. I think we that's got so dinner. Um, she started bringing me to events and it was so genuine. So anytime I have like an issue with social media or something I see, I talk to Cass about it. I'm like, how would you deal with this? Like what's mm -hmm. going on? And we're kind of just always there. So build yourself a support system, whether it's with other creators or just your friends of people that are going to remind you to neglect those hateful comments mm -hmm. and feel you know, like just ignore them and don't let them take your sunshine away. Mm -hmm. What I will say okay. is though, I think going into it, people are like, oh, mean comments. People are calling you ugly. People are calling you fat. Be, it's not gonna be just that. People are going to really come at your character. Mm -hmm. And that is the stuff that hurts me. You can call me fat, you can call me gay. I don't care, that shit is, people have said to me my whole life. Mm -hmm. But I've had videos of people like literally basically telling me I'm a bad person. Like the, I woke up one day and three different people were saying Brand Flakes is a bad name to Philadelphia. There's so many important issues going on in this city and he chooses just to like black out. The kid has problems. Like just like awful. Like yeah. like literally like, oh my God, you would have thought I killed this person's family. Yeah. Like, and yeah. that is stuff that like, it's not normal. It's I not think that normal for anybody. People are kind of weird. Yeah. They're weirdos. I though, think that you know? that I think that that like when you when you first initially read something like that, you're kind of like, oh, am I a bad person? But yeah. it, when you really dig deep into it, I think it's so important to realize that that is a direct reflection yeah. on them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you're a hater. Yeah. Like you are such a hater and you're yeah. probably jealous. Yeah. To be I always say, I mean, even deeper than that, I always say that. They see somebody living out their passion, and they yeah. they're yeah. Mad, they in a way they kind of regret not going for theirs. So they're 100. Yeah. And, and if that's something that you're passionate about, and you don't seem you don't think that I'm helping out in this area, go do it. Yeah, yeah and go anything good that is that starts, so there's gonna be people that want to just t see it burn. That's yep. just the way the world yeah. works, and I get it. Those comments can be tough because I had comments before. I had people talk shit before, but. I kind of realized at the end of the day, like who those people were. And I, I was like, dude, mm -hmm. yeah. like, how are they going to, how am I going to let these people get in the Nobody's way of what I either. want to do and my goals? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of want to ask this. Do you feel like you have any type of responsibility now that you kind of, you're building a platform for yourself? So that's kind of like where those videos were coming from. They're like, you know, you have an app, you like have this big platform, like you should be using it. And I definitely do. I just feel like everyone should feel comfortable mm -hmm. advocating for what they want to advocate for in whatever way they feel comfortable for me i'm not i'm not a performative person i'm not gonna if i donate to a charity i don't need to post about it the second i do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but it's for me like one thing i like to do like i mentioned i like to support local businesses i like to i remember i like to be interactive with people beyond like this mm -hmm. girl messaged me a few months ago and she was like hey like i just want you to know like your videos are really like putting a smile on my face i'm going through a really tough time right now and I was like, can you tell me what's going on? And I sent her a video basically just like telling her that like, you know, I was there for her listening to her. And I, I knew that that meant so much to her that like someone That's like awesome. me not only read, answered, but like actually took the time to make a video and like support mm -hmm. them. So it's like I want to be able to help a lot of people. Um, but yeah, no, anytime there's like a big issue or something that I feel passionate about, you know, I definitely feel like I have some kind of obligation to post or, you know, take a stance. It's just hard um, because You're I don't want to. You're also not a superhuman. I'm not a mm. superhuman. Yeah. I'm not political. I don't like to, I don't want to alienate anybody and be like, oh, like you're dumb if you think this opinion or you're you're stupid if you think this. Like I never want anyone to feel like that. So it does make it a little bit harder mm. um, because I never want my followers to feel a certain way or like about me. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I think that it is important to definitely use what I have, you know, to do you know, good things. And whether that's as simple as making a video about mental health and encouraging other people to talk about it and normalize it, then that's what it is. Um, right. I can't be everything to everybody. What are you passionate about? I'm passionate about people. I mean, I really am passionate about like, I, I do like, at the end of the day, I always knew I wanted to be in some kind of a field or career to help people. But for me, helping people is making them laugh. I mm -hmm. want people uh, like those are the messages like what Selena Gomez said when she's like I go to your page when I'm having a bad day. I want someone to be like I need Same. some entertainment <laughs> or I need to laugh at something or I need to like get my mind off something. I want people to be like I'm going to go watch Brand Flakes TikToks mm -hmm. and I want them to laugh. I want them to relate. I want them to feel like that they have somebody like that they have and I'm very passionate about that. Um, I'm passionate about you know just experiencing things and living life to the fullest. Um, I love like being like this crazy stuff like 
it all happens so much now that some it's very hard for me to like not take it for granted because it, at this point it almost feels like normal in some mm-hmm. aspects but mm-hmm. sometimes I literally have to ground myself and sit down and be like no Brandon like you've accomplished so much there's if you stopped now if the app deleted tomorrow like you have so much yeah. to be proud of rather than looking at it like I have so much still left to do and that's a mindset that I'm consistently working on training myself being like you've already accomplished so much you can be proud and also continue to want to grow, but don't let it consume you. And that—that that is hard. Yeah. It's very addicting. Yeah. I, yeah, I do mention that to people too because I speak to a lot of addicts and people mm-hmm. in recovery, and I always mention to them too, like, track your progress. Be proud mm-hmm. of your nine months clean today. Be proud of that. You know, it yep. may not be a year or two years, but guess what? Like, you keep keep reassuring yourself every single day and, and keep being grateful for what you what you have and what you've overcome. And it's really hard to get yeah. lost in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. You feel. I feel like. You're constantly thinking about the future and what you do want to accomplish and stuff. Mm. It's so we fall short on looking yeah. at what we have overcome. Yeah, there's a yeah. there's definitely a balance because listen, like you have a lot of potential to grow and be an advocate for whatever you want. Also, entertain a lot of people too. You know, yeah. like, don't just limit yourself to New Philly. And obviously, you know that, but also too, like you do want to, you know, check me. Like, listen, I've I've come this far, but guess yeah. what? There's a lot more you can do. Mm-hmm. Just because that allows you, because you said you said you make a lot of people smile. You make Paige smile. You make Selena Gomez smile. You make you make me smile. <laughs> and it's like just imagine the scope and and the the amount of people you can reach. You know, and, and those messages you get about yeah. people because that that's true, man. People like to be entertained, but they also look for outlets too when they when they feel something or they where they feel sad or any type of emotion. You know, people are gonna more and more people are gonna look towards you for your funny videos and whatever you do in the future. And it's like you gotta be receptive to that. Like listen, I understand that I am helping this person. So then if they, if you send them a simple message, that might go a long way, you know? Yeah. So it is important to track your progress and when I tell you, you I went through the hardest mental break of my life like a few months ago and then mm. I was going through a terrible breakup and all of my friends like I'm just somebody that I made I would like make fun of my trauma or something yeah. I was like the funny person I always like, do that I am that <laughs> satire I'm, yes yeah. like I am that friend like and yeah. they and like it's funny though like I mean it's not funny like I had to I had to <laughs> actually like hey guys like this is something I need to go to therapy for but like I'm gonna laugh about it <laughs> I can laugh about like, that because yeah, we just had you we, on yeah, to like, talk about I it can, I can laugh about <laughs> it now and um but I was like it yeah we have those laughing moments but then there are those times where like I'm alone yeah. and like mm-hmm. I have to sit with those thoughts and stuff like that. That's and the hardest part. That is the hardest part. And I was going through a terrible breakup mm-hmm. and I'm not kidding you. Every single one of my friends were s- in my DMs sending me your TikToks. No like, way. Yes. And I, and that's literally how I was getting through it because see, I was that, like, that could be yes, so like see, like I was alone, but I had that relatable content yeah. where it was like, you were talking about like Philly, like Philly guys and like <laughs> categorizing them. And I was like going through a breakup and I was like, these scrubs, like, like you know what? Like this is, these no, dickheads. yes, like these dickheads, like, no, I'm better than this. Like, mm. but to have that relatable content and like, even in those lonely moments, mm-hmm. it's like, it's relatable. Yeah. And, and it's huge. And it really, really did get me through a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then I wound up sleeping with somebody and, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, hey. and literally this is actually funny. So I wind up sleeping with him and he's like, yeah, I'm actually like, I'm not going to brag. He's like, um, I'm famous. Like I'm, I'm on TikTok." And he brings up your TikTok, And it was like one of the daddies. No, yes, he slept yes, with the daddy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was literally like brand flakes. And then Kev was like, we're getting brand flakes on the show. And I was like, Yes. yes, check this off Good my bucket list. I was like, He's way to come full circle. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now entered girl talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes. <laughs> that's awesome, though. But yeah, no. So like um, you have any like, obviously, I know you're pretty like you're kind of in your mode right now. You're kind of doing your TikToks right now. Yeah. Um, what do you have any big plans for the future? Like, what's your what's your end goal? Do you have any goals for like a few years down the line that you have? I don't know. Honestly, I would love to, you know, make this into a thing you know mm-hmm. whether it i guess i want to be famous i don't know yeah. if i want to be famous i feel like everybody <laughs> has like a lick like, of i want to be famous yeah i don't know if i want to be like huge but like do you know what i definitely would like to be comfortable i think a goal of mine always has been Go to be on tv <laughs> <laughs> i would love to be on a reality tv show at least I think uh, you would thrive you yeah. would thrive 
where I could at least like win some money. Did you ever watch <laughs> uh, the Hype House? We all want to win some yeah, money. Right? Oh. The Hype House. Okay, so I I'm like queen of going on Netflix and like putting on like Whatever's background on no yeah. no the noise because I'm gonna sit on my phone and then yeah, I can't same. like listen. <laughs> but I. I literally put on Hype House to do that. Mm. My, my phone was down. I'm like staring at it. I was like, this is insane. They put together like some of the biggest TikTokers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they even say it. They were like, you would have no idea the background. Like the one kid, huge, huge, huge star on TikTok and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think he has like 13.5 million followers, which is mm. absolutely insane. They get paid off all the stuff. Mm-hmm. He was like months ago, me and my girlfriend, and the girlfriend actually lives in the house now too. They were sleeping in their car. Yeah, it's crazy. And he it's was crazy. like, it, he yeah. was like, my, I have no relationship with my parents. This, that, and the third. And I was like, I love that this is almost becoming a trend yeah. with mental health being talked about so much yeah. more. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. Yeah. you have absolutely no idea what somebody is going yeah, through 100%. or their background. Yeah, that's what I love about social media too. I is love like it. overnight you could turn into something, you know, mm-hmm. build yep. your platform up, and you know, it's all about it's all about the message too. But yeah, it is crazy. Like just the fact that like less than a year ago you didn't even have a TikTok account, yeah, really, yeah, and, now, and now you're you know you're, you figured your, figured out your lane, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, have you, you want to do anything in like the mental health space? Is that something you're passionate about as well? I would. Um, I don't know what that is, whether it's just being an advocate or being a part of, you know, charities or nonprofits or what it was or like Mm -hmm. what it will be. But Mm -hmm. I definitely want to consistently talk about it more and more. And that's like a goal of 2022. You know, that video that I made yesterday was just like the first drop in the bucket. Like I want to continue to go with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, even stepping up and yeah. coming on this podcast exactly. and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like anytime I have the chance to like show people like the real me. I mean, everything you see is the real me. But mm-hmm. to show people that more like vulnerable. There's different sides side. to yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to be able to take that opportunity to do that because I do think, you know, like some people do get this impression of me that I'm just like this party boy, like airhead where it's like no i actually have two freaking degrees i'm pretty smart and i have a lot of things that i can talk about besides drinking yeah um, mm-hmm. the drinking's just what's getting gets what's getting me paid it's <laughs> entertainment it's, it's yeah you know what i mean and that's something uh, that's just the people who don't everyone's gonna try to mold you into something yeah. you know what i'm saying that's oh like the God, tricky part yeah. with starting anything is that people are gonna come in your life and like oh no you should do this and it's like listen i know what i want to do i know yeah. the direction i want to go just you know politely you know just you know <laughs> yeah. politely exit you know politely exit the car. yeah but like nah it's like that uh, is tough and that's probably something you'll go through too in the future but yeah as long as you stay focused and stay strong but mm-hmm. it's my favorite part of the podcast where we get to try food so uh thank god i'm so hungover busy I'm meals really, like, donated some uh cheesecake egg rolls yeah don't even get a little zoom up on that there you go <laughs> um but yeah so we'll try some egg rolls real quick and we'll do a little taste test real quick Nicole, we did it again. I appreciate you. Mm. That is good. Oh, my God. That's so good. Yeah. Let's go, Nicole. Okay. Very That's sweet. Mm-hmm. Now my lights are all messed up. That's fine. Oh, I can I taste, like, the cheese. Mm-hmm. That's good. Hey, well. I don't have all Uh-oh, I need a Nicole, nap, clip it. Put it on IG. You killed it. All right. I'm going to lick my fingers, cut this part out. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so... Uh, besides getting a shout out from Selena Gomez, um, have you met any, like, so I want your take on this. Um, okay. There's not, like, obviously you have LA. Have you ever asp- aspired to move to LA or no? No. And I get this question a lot. Um, and everyone's like, why aren't you moving to LA? Why aren't you moving to New York? And I always say, I've always been the person that wants to be a big fish, little pond. And in Philly, I have such an opportunity to do that. You Mm -hmm. know, there's only so many people in Philly that are like big content creators. Whereas in L.A. and New York, you're kind of just one in a million. Um, A bunch of people do that. Um, So I like to kind of be like. You also said you grew up in like. Yeah. My family's here. I would. Obviously, if the opportunity presented itself and it was something that like I felt like was going to be exciting for me, I would like to try it eventually. But for right now, I'm very content with, you know, where I am. You're literally hitting on exactly my mindset. Like um, in 2018, I I apologize, Paige. Uh, I was like, screw that. You'll see in the future. We'll fix that. Um, Now, so 2018, I lived in L.A. for the summer. Um, I had an internship through Temple and um, 
I loved it. It was awesome. And it was great. I was like, I'm moving here when I'm done school. I was a junior, going to be a senior. And then, obviously, I just got out of college, so I didn't have that much money. Then COVID hit. Yeah. Then you realize everything got super political. And I'm just like, then you realize, like, L.A. is sort of a dump. <laughs> it kind of like, <laughs> I, listen, a lot of homelessness there. I mean, gr- the opportunities are unreal. But yeah. you mentioned something, big fish, little pond, mm-hmm. that I am, like, trying to hit on, too, because... The opportunities, like you said, are just are massive. Like, yeah. because it's gonna take a little bit more work. But if you can be the first one or one of the first ones in Philly or like in general, like that's where the that's where the growth's gonna come from. Because yeah. then, like Selena Gomez saw you from Philly. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it, you you don't need to move to LA anymore. Yeah. You don't need that. You know, and it's like, I really, like I said, I realize that. So now my mindset's kind of like, let me. I want to collaborate with as many people from Philly. I want to find these people in Philly, yeah. influencers or whatever, and just kind of collaborate and try to build that network and bu- build that and make Philly some someone on so the map. underrated. Yeah, it's it is. One of the biggest it is. underrated cities. I feel it, like. and there, and it is. With the pandemic and stuff too, like we, busy meals, certain things like that. There's so many little local places that mm-hmm. you start to like really find out about or yep. yeah. hear about through different channels and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's so cool to watch it come full circle in your city 100 percent. like and that's what like that's what i bought um to your attention with pages pillow like that was Mm -hmm. always my goal behind my platform was i wanted to help people who had mental health issues or 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 a story behind what they actually pursued and and made come like full circle and it's crazy because that was my vision talking about that Mm -hmm. and now I feel like mental health, like you were talking about the Island podcast. I like Mm. just watched that and Mm. they said we go on and we we actually listen to like the mental health aspect of things. And Mm -hmm. he I think he said he was like, I see this coming full circle and I feel like podcasts are going to start talking about this more like call her daddy. Certain places on like Barstool Sports, like their podcast, they're all taking a different direction. And like you have those funny relatable content episodes but then you have therapy episodes yeah like full-blown therapy i mean it's because of covid (laughs) honestly but but yeah i mean so brand before we end off um i want to say thank you for coming on but one piece of advice you have what's the what are the three biggest things you've learned as a creator um whether it's mentally or um like content or just kind of growth like what are three things you think you've learned in the past year that you could tell someone whether it's someone who maybe is afraid to come out of the closet or someone who wants to start a tiktok or youtube channel or somebody who just wants to follow their passion and and find something that they're good at or get through a breakup oh wow (laughs) that's a whole different episode (laughs) this is a lot let me think i mean the corniest corn corn thing ever to say (laughs) is follow your dreams but like i seriously do believe that i mean i never knew that this was like a dream of mine um but it really is um so whatever it is that you love like try to do that in some capacity if it can't be your nine to five job make sure you're doing something you love on the side no matter what make sure every single day you're getting to do that um, because it's going to bring you happiness and you are naturally going to be good at what you love to do. Mm-hmm. Like that, it will come with that passion. Mm-hmm. Um, so whatever it is out there that you love, do it. And if you want to make content about it, do it because the content will come easily mm-hmm. when it's something that you love to do. For me, it was making people laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, that's advice number one. Advice number two is something I learned in the past year um, is... And in some ways, be careful what you wish for. You know, you will get things and it's not always going to be what it seems like. Um, And you have to at the I think what I want to say is find happiness within yourself um, and don't like at the end of the day, you can get everything you want and still be unhappy in some ways. And there's days where I am still unhappy, but I have to find that happiness within myself no matter what, I can have a million followers, I can have one follower. At, at the end of the day, I'm still going to be in this body, still living this life, so I need to find a way to make myself happy. Um, and you can't just expect to get that from anything. Um, mm-hmm. So you might get everything that you think you wanted, and you might still feel like a little piece of emptiness. So make sure that whatever that is that you're missing, you're able to find it. Um, and, you know, like I said, be careful what you wish for, because it might not be what you necessarily expected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, okay. That, that was, was a good one. Yeah, that was, was a really deep. good one. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> preach queen, preach <laughs> queen. <laughs> no. um, and then don't lose yourself in the in it. Um, don't, Maybe that one hit a little harder. Too. Don't <laughs> don't get consumed in whatever it is that is consuming you. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we are living in a fucking simulation. Like, <laughs> just yeah. take a it step back when you need to. Listen to your mind. Listen to your body. Listen to your emotions. Like, know when you need a break, and don't let anything, like, consume you to the point where it is like deteriorating you as a person. Um, because there will be those days where it feels like that's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, just remember who you are, remember who your friends are. Like that is something I learned too. Like you will learn who is always there for you mm-hmm. and who necessarily wasn't. Um, so that's a hard lesson yeah, to learn in life. It is, too. it is a hard lesson. Um, so just continue to make sure that no matter what you're doing in any capacity, it's not totally consuming you to the point where it's, you know, giving you the inability to move on. You know, you mm-hmm. need to be able to have that balance in life. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That's amazing. Well, that was really good. Brandon. You, that was awesome. <laughs> it's a great way to Thank end up. Thank you. I feel like that was like a great. giant a ramble. Great. I don't know if any of that and makes sense. That, no, that all makes sense. And that is my TED Talk. And I think that's a yeah, great right? way to end the podcast. Uh, Brandon, a.k.a. Brand Flakes. Thank you so much for coming yes, on. Yes, you're the dude. best. That was good. You're my favorite Thank gorgeous you. girl. Yes, uh, we're just gorgeous, gorgeous girls. girls do podcasts. podcasts. I was going to say. <laughs> All right, guys, that yeah. was the loft. Um, yeah, I want to thank everyone off. for watching. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it helps a lot with growth. And uh, go Flakes, follow, thanks. go follow Brand Flakes on TikTok. I'll have that all linked People in the description. People probably already do. Yeah, <laughs> like, really. Yes! So, like Kev, don't They're tell us shit you already know. <laughs> Kevin Bader, nobody. But Brand, I, I really, uh, Brandon, I really wish you the best. Uh, good, luck. So. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck. And also, I also do want to help you. Yeah, I wa- don't be a stranger. We're yeah, friends now. Yeah, yeah we're friends me now. Yeah, I want to help you with with your editing and all stuff because, like I said, I can do it. Obviously, you can talk to me and Paige whenever you want. And yeah. listen, I just laugh about our trauma. Yeah, yeah. 100%. yeah. Um, so yeah, I wanna, I wanna help. I wanna be. Um, I just wanna kind of turn Philly into a little bit more of a of a creative culture. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I wanna put, Philly hype house. Yeah, yes. Oh, did we just start up? something, dude? That was kind of that was kind of <laughs> yes. my idea with this house because uh, my two roommates they film and they do music, so we kind of like collaborate together. But like Brandon, cool. thank you so much, and also, thank dude, you. congrats on your success. He thank just, you. At the 200K. day, k at the day of filming, our gorgeous girl hit 200k on yes. TikTok. Congrats, Woo! dude. Well, listen, I wish you the best. And Paige, thanks for coming on for yes, being a host. Absolutely. Um, yeah, dude. I'm super stoked. You killed I'll, it. I'll be back. You I'll killed it. Back. And Dylan, shout out for being the third camera. I appreciate yes, you, dog. You are the best. Um, well, listen, this is The Loft, episode 40. Um, Woo, Kevin ooh, Nichols. Cool. That's Love Brand that. Flakes. Milestone that's Paige Pullman. And yeah, milestone episode. Actually, is a milestone episode. So um, yeah, thank you guys and peace. See you.